Now, from here, we will be talking about beginning of industrialization. A more secure food supply and improved diet made agricultural communities move to a new land for farming. Because now the population was increasing, so there was demand of more food and more resources for those, for those people. So now new land were getting discovered for farming and slowly, slowly, it also led to a substantial increase in the population. And because the things and resources need to be catered for those people, some people became miners who used to work in the mines. They mined flint to make flint axes. And to mine flint from rocks, miners, they all used deer antlers and shovels as a tool. And these tools were made from shoulder blades of cattle. These cattle are the domestic animals or sometimes wild animals. So after they die, their bones were used for making these tools. And these tools were used for their work. Like these tools were used in the mines. And they all worked by the light because in the mines it was all dark so they had an idea of getting light in the mines by using small lamps made from the hollowed pieces of chalk containing animal fat and wicks made of moss you can see the image of moss on the screen. So that moss was taken away and also the animal fat was used for lighting the lamp. You can imagine how creative the idea was. This is only the one way, but at that time they used to use different ways for lighting in the mines so that they can work in light. And thus, growth of agriculture was accompanied by growth of tool making that provided crude agricultural implements. And then slowly, slowly, agriculture was increasing and now they had new tools which were making their work easy so they can work more nowadays now you can see a word f l i n t flint what is this it is a type of rock and it was used to make axes because you know axes were important for farmers for clearing dense forest land to raise their crop and stone axes were used to fell trees to cut down the trees so this flint stone was used for making their tool And thus, making wheels, constructing buildings, mining ores to make tools and ornaments were a step towards industrialization. 
This way we can say that now it was the time moving towards industrialization because they had now new creative tools, ornaments, different uh, items now they were using for their work in daily life. Now we will be discussing about the metals discovery. You know, the use of metal was first discovered in Iran and Turkey. And the time was approximately 8,000 years ago. And the early use of copper and gold was for making ornaments only. You can see the image on screen. These metals items were found as ornaments. And then slowly, 2,000 years later, human began to make copper axes and weapons with sharp cutting edges. Because now, because of the invention of metals, their tools quality improved. And now soon the smith mixed different metals and produced different new metals. Like bronze was produced by mixing copper and tin. So this bronze was now more stronger than the other tool metals. And this alloy, which we just discussed, alloy of bronze, it was harder and easier to cast into knives and axes. And by 2500 BC, we know BC is a timeline before Christ. So by 2500 BC, bronze metal became the dominant metal. And from 1000 BC, means 1000 before Christ, years before Christ, farmers had better axes, sickles, and knives. So these are some tools. And besides these agricultural tools, the carpenters also had some better tools. Humans discovered that copper, iron, and bronze made stronger tools. So these were the few metals with the help of these metals, they made their tools stronger. And this discovery brought humans out of the stone age because now they found that this is something stronger than the stone. So they started using more metals. And now, slowly, slowly, the use of stone was vanished. So that is why we say that now the beginning of Industrial Revolution took place. And the potters were using high temperature kilns or ovens to fire their wares. You must have seen somewhere the bhatti in which the potters keep their caste sachas for their utensils and different items. So it was accidentally that they discovered the lumps of gold and copper 
was melted at a high temperature. And similarly, accidentally, they found that this could be molded into shapes in any shape they want, whether it is cylindrical shape or any other round shape. <clears throat> and after putting it into the shape, and when it is cooled down, that becomes hard again. So this way, an invention or a new idea was created to make their tools or ornaments or things or pots. So the metal smiths, they were the people who used to make things from the metal. So they all discovered that intense heat could extract copper from metal and metal bearing ores buried in the rocks. And this process of melting the rocks, which was having some metal inside it, and then after getting it melted, they used to put it away from the rock in a, another sacha or in other cast, it was, this process was known as smelting. So this was now discovered and it was used in more. Now we will be discussing and understanding the story of human evolution. When human evolution began, forests had dwindled. And because of the glaciations, much of the land surface was, however, still covered by the forests. And the, because of glacier, they were melted. So the forest were, our forests were drowned and they all were under the water. So the common ancestors of apes and humans had to come down from trees. And they all walked on all fours on the ground, two hands and two feet. So they walked with the help of all the four, means two hands plus two feet, and on the ground. They had four limbs. And you know, the recent molecular studies have revealed that from common ancestors, evolution of apes, their names are written on the screen as well, chimpanzee, gorilla, gibbon, and orangutan. So all these four species of chimpanzees or apes, when the genetic study was done, it was found that human diverged about six million years ago, and the ancestors of all these four species were common. Now here you can see the image. I would like you to have a look at it in a close picture. Now, let us understand this image. You have seen all these stages of human evolution. You can see the different names written under all these changes. So these are all the names of human species, 
in that period of time. Basically, there are five main species name which we need to remember. As we just have seen the image, so the first image which you seen in that picture, the first image of the human, that species was known as Australopithecus. You know, th that is the scientific name which is used for that particular species. They were also known as the ape man. They were naked, they walked upright because it was the primitive time, so they had no clothes at that time. And they used tools made up of bones and pebbles. So in case they feel hungry, they used to make some use of those tools and they used the, those tools to kill the animals so that they can have a food. Now this is the second species. You know the first species name was Australopithecus and the second species which was the outcome of the first species. You can say the Australopithecus gave rise to Homo habilis. And it was probably around 2.5 million years ago. And these ancestors had ape-like long arms, but large brain size. And their brain size was intermediate between the first type, Australopithecus, and the modern human. And also they had have ridges above eyes like the apes. So the ridges, you can see, it is important, we need to remember. And the third species name was Homo erectus. Homo erectus made stone axes, hunted for animals and discovered fire. So they used to make, they used to use the tools for making their arrangement of the food. So this is the third name which is important. And this is the third stage we are continuing. <clears throat> and Homo erectus is supposed to have existed between 1.5 million years to 2 lakh years ago. Their fossils have been found at different places like China and then Java and in the Germany. At these three places, their fossils have been found and because these fossils are found, this suggests that they evolved in Africa and then from Africa it spreads to Asia and then Europe. So these are the Homo erectus species because their fossils have been found at all these places and research has been done about knowing the time period in which time period they were active. So we found all these reports. And then fourth stage, or you can say the fourth species which next evolved was from Homo erectus. It was the, you can say, 
Neanderthal man. They are also known as the Neanderthal ensis. And this fourth species was found in Europe, in Asia, and Africa. In all these places, they fashioned a large variety of well-made tools, and also these species were the successful hunters. as we have understood till fourth, this fourth species, Neanderthal men, become extinct. And with the extinction of this species, another line of humans, its name was Homo sapiens, evolved. And this Homo sapiens, which is the fifth species, it is considered to be the direct ancestors of the modern human. And as we have studied about our evolution from the primitive human till the modern man, so let us now see how from primitive hunters and gatherers, human discovered fire. And along with human evolution, skills also improved progressively in tool making. Because human now started using tools. So primitive humans, the hunters and the gatherers moved from place to place and they all led a nomadic life because they were not staying at one place. As nomads, they roamed large and distant areas. And they had no permanent adobe. They had no permanent home. They were just moving from one place to another. And they lived near the water bodies, such as riverbeds and lakes, located on the edge of forests, where plants and animals were abundant. And they also lived in caves. They lived in groups of 20 to 30. And as they roamed from one place to the other, sometime in the forest in search of food during the day and then returned to the caves at sunset to save themselves from the attack of wild animals. And as they moved along, they left behind their stones and bone implements because when moving from one place to another, it is very difficult to carry all the stones and tools because it was not a one or two tools. It was a group. It was many tools they were using. And their main occupation in life was to procure food. Their diet consisted of seeds, roots, and fruits of plants and small animals, which they killed with the help of those tools they made from pebbles and stones.
because tools were very important it was helpful for finding food for protecting themselves from wild animals so it was necessary so that they keep their tools with them so far we have covered many points i hope you all have understood this we understood about fire we understood about wheels then how wheel was discovered how agricultural changes took place how the industrialization started all these points were explained in this video in the next video will be video part 5 thank you namaskar